book of 2 Kings chapter number 7. And we're going to read from verse number 1 to verse number 7 and verse number 16. 2 Kings chapter number 7 from verse 1 to verse number 7 and verse number 16. 2 Kings chapter number 7. Please don't open 3 Kings. Just open 2 Kings. So that we can make sure we're on the same passage of scripture. 2 Kings chapter number 7, verse number 1 to verse number 7. And the Bible reads as follows Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time a sea of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So an officer on, the, on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Look, if the Lord would make widows in heaven, would this thing be? And he said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine in the city, there is famine in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall die. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses and the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. Verse number 8 as well. And when the lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into the tent, ate and drank, and carried from it silver and gold and clothing, and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent, and carried some from there also, and went and hid it. Verse number 16. Then the people went out and plundered the tents of the Syrians. So a sea of flour, or a fine flour, was sold for a shekel, and two seers of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to, to share this morning on an on a important subject, but... I'll spend a little bit of time sitting on, on the subject itself, on the theme itself. And I want to share with you this morning, imperfect but chosen. Imperfect but chosen. I want you to say to your neighbor, imperfect but chosen. If you don't like your neighbor, speak to them like you like them. Imperfect but chosen. I can see some people that don't like each other this morning. God bless you with love. Amen. Imperfect but chosen. Imperfect but chosen. It is very easy for us as a people, and it is, a, it is within our nature, as a people, that when we receive anything that is new to us, the first thing we look for is what is flawed on it. Amen? Amen. Have you ever heard when, when you are celebrating your, your dress or your, your car or your whatever? Oftentimes you say, my car is so lovely. My dress is so, I love my dress. But, but the flowers are too arranged. <laughs> oh, but, but, but the speed of the car is not enough. And oftentimes people are quick to pick out what is not there. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And remember what, what, what we shared during the week in, in prayer that Whatever you magnify becomes big. Mm. Amen? Mm. It's, it, it becomes straight in your face because you have magnified it. Mm. But whatever you, you demagnify remains its size. Mm. It does not change size. Mm. It remains the same size it is. And, and, and the interesting thing is, 
whenever we come into church, whenever we come into the presence of the Lord, every single one of us expects perfection. Mm -hmm. huh? mm. Every single one of us expects perfection. And the nature of man is such that imperfection is uplifted to a point where it covers perfection. Imperfect, but chosen. The second thing that's interesting is me and you are, as we sit where we are, are full bodied. Right? Amen? Amen. Most of us are full bodied. We have the functions of all our limbs, we have the functions of every cognitive and psychological, physiological element that can function. We are complete according to the definition of a human being. Amen. Right? But I want you to watch. There's somebody who is incomplete who's making more money than you. Mm -hmm. huh? yeah. Some of them are crossing your mind right now. There's somebody who does not have feet who is making more money than you. Yeah. You have everything and somebody who is imperfect is succeeding in their imperfection. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't get a miracle that they got feet all of a sudden. They didn't go to a miracle crusade and all of a sudden they got all the limbs that they needed. In the midst of their imperfection, they are still succeeding. Amen. In the midst of what they are lacking, they are still succeeding. Amen. But chosen. It matters who chooses. Amen. Come on. It matters who chooses. If there is someone to choose, there is also somebody to unchoose. Yeah. Inverted commas, right? Amen. If there is someone to choose, there is also somebody to ignore you. Mm. <laughs> eh? yeah. when, you when you were told, I, I remember back in the days when, when, when your husband was trying to propose to you, mm -hmm. there were some brothers who ignored you, but somebody chose you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that brother that used to go with the class? He ignored you for the whole year, but somebody chose you. Amen. The fact that someone has ignored you does not mean nobody has use for you. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. The fact that somebody has passed you by and has not taken cognizance of you does not mean you are empty-handed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's an issue of vision. They did not see what I had. They see what I do not have. Some people left your life not because you are empty, not because you cannot change anything, but just because they didn't have the eyes to see what you had. There are people that you do not pull back to you because they are only there to magnify what you do not have. Yeah. You remember that person that left you out? They did not see what you had. Some of them will come back after years only when what you have has been manifested. Like, Is this the same you? You left me before my time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when my time comes, you'll be able to understand that the place where you threw me out was actually the place for my destiny. Was actually the place where I'm going to fulfill what I am and who I am. Some people were throwing you out, but they were actually positioning you. Some people thought they were shifting you and erasing you, but they were actually placing you in the right place. Had you not been retrenched, you'd not be a successful businessman. It was actually a repositioning. It was not a cancellation. Because they did not see what I had. Let me put a contradiction to you. Sometimes you can see so much of what I have that you miss what I really have. You hear what I said? Sometimes you can see so much that's on me that you miss what I really have. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that just now. Second Kings chapter 7, verse number 1. Watch what the Bible says. And I, I, when I read this passage of scripture this morning, I said, what? I've never seen this in my, in my entire life of reading this passage of scripture. I missed this part. And it has always been there because there was no new Bible written yesterday. It has always been there. Second Kings chapter 7 verse 1. So an office of those, no, no, that Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. Now, can you see how Elisha is presenting a vision? He says, hear the word of the Lord. Tomorrow, about this time, a sea of flour will be, show, will be sold for a shekel. And two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Let's talk about the situation. The situation 
was so dire that what would happen in, in the city of Samaria or in every city back in the days was that every city was built with walls. Right? Mm. Remember the book of Isaiah when it speaks of watchmen standing on the wall? Mm. They are standing on the wall of a city. So every city would be built with walls. And it's, I wish I had a city to bring to you, but I uh, just imagine it. You know, some of the things I wish for God must just allow me to bring them to church. But I can't bring a city. So we, you would have walls surrounding a city. And when walls were surrounding a city, there would be an entrance to the gate, or rather to the city, a specific gate. Some cities would have more than one gate. The city of David had about, I think, eight gates that were there surrounding. Now, there would be an entrance into the city via this particular gate. And what would happen in the city, or what happened in this particular time, is that the Syrians went and enclosed the Israelites or the Samaritans in the place where they were supposed to be protected. Mm -hmm. huh? Amen. The walls were supposed to bring protection from outside. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. The gates were supposed to protect them from enemies outside. But what happens when what you trusted becomes your problem? <laughs> what do you do when that person that is supposed to protect you actually becomes your problem? When that job that is supposed to satisfy you actually becomes an issue. And what the city gates, the city walls were now not protecting them from the outside, but were stopping them from getting things outside. And watch how the city is closed and the walls are closed. And this, this happens. It was the, the famine was so dire in the city that two women decided, let us cook our child. Do you understand? There was so much hunger that two women said to each other, today we will cook my child, tomorrow we will cook yours. Yeah? When you are when you have eaten and you are full, lest you forget. They cooked one child. When they asked for the other child, the, the mother said, Never. Yeah, yeah. I would never. You remember the wish from Umako? It was never. I would never. And this was so tired that they would sell donkey down. Mm -hmm. eh? The extracts of a, of a donkey they would sell it to be cooked and eaten. That's how dire the situation was. Some situations can bring you to a place of eating what you never thought you'd eat. Some situations can bring you to places where you could call people you never thought you would call. Some situations can make you kneel and become so humble that you would go to places you never thought you would go because of a situation and because of a circumstance. And the dimes of the situation, in the midst of the situation, there was a servant of the Lord who said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Tomorrow about this time, a sea of flour will be sold for a shekel. Now, listen. He says, all these things will be sold at the gate of Samaria. Mm. I want you to pick that up. Mm -hmm. They will be sold what? At the gate, at the gate of Samaria. <laughs> now, listen. When something is sold at the gate, mm. you must know that it's in abundance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I, don't, I don't think you get what I'm saying. No. Let, me, let me put a plate to you. When something is sold at the gate, you must know that in the city it's in abundance. Yeah. So what we're trying, what we're actually trying to say to you is we want to be the first point of contact of business for you. Mm -hmm. Because there are other competitors in the city. Mm -hmm. So this when, whenever you, you, you get to it, when, whenever you, you go to, to let's, let's put it, a, a football stadium as, a, as an example, when, when, when the great Amakusi is playing, amen? The great, the great Amakusi is playing. Did you say great? The great, yeah, I know it was not a mistake. The great Amakusi. Let's not divide the church, let's continue with the message. Now listen, you, when you get to the football stadium, whatever you meet at the gate, when you enter, you must know that everybody might be selling the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Mm. It's not a new thing. No, it's just that we have positioned ourselves at the gate so that you buy from us first. Yeah. 
And the selling would happen at the gate of Samaria. Mm -hmm. In other words, it indicated that by this time tomorrow, there will be more of this. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Now watch. Verse number two. That somebody denied. An officer said, the king leaned, who, leaned, who the king leaned on, said, man of God, look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, this could not be, or could this be? And he said, in fact, you shall see with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Now, in other words, there are, there are three groups of people that we're seeing here. Number one, we are seeing the receivers of the vision, mm -hmm. which are represented by Elisha. Amen. But number two, we are seeing the deniers of the vision, mm -hmm. which are represented by the officer of the king. Now, there are people in our lives that when the vision which comes from the Lord comes to us, they are able to deny it. Yeah. They are able to say, no, this, this will never be. Well, now we know you. In fact, we know how failing you are. You cannot make it in this journey. Who do you think you are? In fact, let me put, give you a history. Your grandmother attempted and failed. Your mother did not even attempt. She did not even try because she knew failure is a standard. You, what are you trying to do? Please go do something else. Don't do this. Stay, yeah. eh? stay where you are. Stay in your lane. <laughs> I, 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 have you found yourself staying in your lane, in a lane that's not yours, but it has been created for you? Yeah. Somebody has decided this is where you're going to stop. Yeah. This is where you're going to end. There's nothing more that's going to happen. Mm. And then he says, even if the windows of heaven will be open, this will not, this will not be. And he says, Elisha responds very interestingly. So he says, you shall see it but you shall not eat of it. The third group of people are people that are only there to see. They're not there to eat. They're there to see. Sometimes we want to feed the seers. We want the seers to come and eat, but they're not there to eat. He says, you shall see it, but you shall not eat of it. Now watch. Immediately when the vision was presented, verse number three, Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. Where shall it be sold? At the gate. At the gate. Where were the men? At the gate. Now let's talk a bit. The men of leprosy, or any men of leprosy during this time, would be rendered unclean. It's number one. Unclean. In other words, brother, come with your leprosy. Is he believe it? He would be rendered unclean. In other words, what would happen is there would be the us who are, are who are clean, and then there would be the one of leprosy who would be at the city gate. Mm. Now, the second thing that would happen is, as much as the one with leprosy is unclean, whatever he touches becomes unclean. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. So what he would touch, when he gives it back to me, when he throws it back to me, I, I, I can't. I can't. So uncleanliness was transferable. Mm. Are we together? Amen. The, the third thing that would happen with some of those lepers is that they, they, their skin would change and peel off. Mm. Hmm? Their skin would peel off. In other words, the entire part of their skin would be falling off their hands, off, off their limbs, off their parts of the body, and they would become pale. So, imagine pale. Because we cannot, we cannot, otherwise I'll have to get some flower and point again. <laughs> imagine pale. So, imagine that the skin has fallen off. Everything is broken out. Everything is no longer as organized on the outside as it should be. Now, watch what would happen. Then we would go to an extent of separating them from us and put them in the gate. Right? There would be a designated place for the unclean. Because they, they cannot spread uncleanliness if they're all unclean. You cannot become unclean, more unclean than lepers. You're already unclean. Now, as much as they would be designated in a specific place, they would sit there together and no one would move out of there. Now, watch. The ones that were clean, that were perfect, were locked in the city. The ones that were 
imperfect were the only ones outside the city. Remember they were at the gate of the city, right? So when we shut the city gate, we did not want anything unclean in our city. So we kept them out of the city gate. Not knowing that God's miracle will not start in the city. God's work will not start in the city. But God's work is actually going to start at the gate of the city. Some people when they shifted you, they did not know that you are shifting you to a place where God is going to start. He's going to start right there where you have fallen. Where everybody thinks is the place of the unclean. There is a brother who is going to walk into church. You know him from somewhere else. When you look at him, you say he's not fit to be in the church. Not knowing that that's where God is going to start his work. That's where God is going to start his miracle. Now listen. And when they were at the city gate, now they said to one another, Why do we sit here? Before we even go to, to them speak to one another, the second thing that you see is that there were four leprous men, right? Mm. Notice how they don't have names. Yeah. They are conditioned. Mm. They are so conditioned that we don't call them by name. Yeah. We call them by situation. Yeah. We call them by circumstances. Mm. The divorced woman, we call them by circumstances. The man who lost his business, we call them by circumstances. The guy who cannot contain himself, we call them by circumstances. But thank God we serve a God who knows our names. He does not only know our circumstances, but he knows our names. The Bible says he has imprinted our names on the palm of his head. Not my situation, not where I am failing, not how bad I am, not how ugly I look, not how uneducated I am. God is not after my status, but God is after my name. Amen. Come on now. Amen. He says, for the first man. Now, do you know that not having a name is not having an identity? Oh no, no, no. Let me let me phrase my English right. That's not that's not what I said. I can see that's ambiguous. Did you know that the fact that you do not have a name? does not mean you do not have an identity. Yeah. Okay. That's what I wanted to say. Amen. The fact that you do not have a name does not mean you don't have an identity. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quantify what I'm going to say just now. We have rendered the name as an identity. But the name is not an identity. It's an identification. Yeah. Okay. It's to separate you from the next person mm-hmm. in the sense of I'm talking to you. Mm-hmm. But it does not define who you are. Mm-hmm. It does not define what you can do. Mm-hmm. It does not define where you can go. Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. We've got some names in our African cultures that when you hear them, you're like, sure. Yeah, <laughs> Were the parents praying hard enough? Mm-hmm. Can, I, can I go through some of them? Yeah. Oh, somebody's name is not that one. <laughs> Should I not? Yeah. Okay, let's be safe. You know them. <laughs> you know those names. And you're thinking to yourself, was there no other names? I mean, there's, a, there's, a, there's even a naming dictionary that you can buy, that you can choose names from. Was there no dictionary at the time where you can choose names? <laughs> Judas of all names. <laughs> Watch. 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 The fact that I do not have a name Amen. did not mean my purpose was erased. Yeah. Come on. The fact that nobody knew me by name does not mean I could not make a mark. Uh, the fact that no one understood who I was because they were they saw all that covered me that they failed to understand who I am does not mean God cannot use me. And how many times do we deny people because they do not meet our standard of perfection? Mm-hmm. 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 Come to church. And you know in our church you must be there praying in tongues. <laughs> when you don't pray in tongues, you, you are not are you praying sister? Are you praying? You are not praying. No, you must pray in tongues. When you pray in tongues, then we know you are a Christian Cree. <laughs> Christian Cree. You are Brother Boo. Sister C. And watch. That which we cl- 
closed outside yeah. is that which has the answer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. That which we closed outside yeah. is that which had yeah. the answer. And listen, the Bible says in a great house, there are not only vessels of silver yes. and gold, mm. but there are also vessels of wood yes. and clay. Now watch, watch. As much as they are not only, they are vessels of silver and gold, right? As much as they are there, God does not decide to lay a treasure in vessels of gold. Yeah. He does not delight, decide to lay a treasure in vessels of, of silver. He says, in charge of clay, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7, in charge of clay, he has laid this earthen vessel, or in this earthen vessel, he has laid this treasure. Now, listen, and when I was praying this morning, the Lord said to me, as much as the clay and the wood vessels are not expensive, they don't look awesome, but the point is they're in the house. They're there in the house. The, the, the issue is not, is not how I look. The issue is not how expensive I look, but the issue is I am in the house. And if I am in the house, there's a master who is used for me in the house. And watch the same leprous man, the Bible says, then they said to one another, why do we sit here and we die? If we go into the city, we'll die. If we go to the city, they will only kill us. But let us rise and go. The fact that we have lost the skin and we have lost the beauty in the skin does not mean we don't have feet to walk. There was a change of focus from the leprosy now to what we have on our side. I know you are weak in some area. I know there's something you cannot do. I know you cannot pray, but thank God you can give. I know you cannot give, but thank God you can help in the cleaning of the church. I know you cannot do everything, but there must be something that God has called you for. There must be something that God wants to use you for. I know it might not be as clear as your neighbor's stuff, but forget the leprosy. Stand up on your feet and start moving forward. The fact that you are leprous does not mean you cannot change the generations. The fact that you are leprous does not mean you cannot change the situation. Oh, you know what? They caught up with leprosy. Do you realize how they were not healed first? Yes. yes. Oh, my word. Yeah. Listen to me. Yes. Do you realize how they were not yet healed of the leprosy? Hey. But with the leprosy, they said we are going to cause something to happen. Yes. With the weakness that we have. The problem is we are we are sitting in a church where we are putting people under pressure. You can only become gods when you are perfect. But look at them. They moved with the leprosy. When Paul moved or when Saul started to preach the gospel, he was, he was still blind. He was still having a weakness. He still preached the gospel. The same Paul that writes the things I do not want to do, I do. Still preaches the gospel. The same Paul who says, I deny myself, I bind my body. In other words, there was a witness that still existed yes. in his life, but the witness was not an excuse not to serve. Yes. Yes. I understand you. You can see the weakness. But I want to talk to those that are hindering you because they see the weakness. You know, there are those that say, no, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. We need here, we need people yeah. that have got hair. <laughs> <laughs> if you do not have hair, we cannot use you. Yeah. If you do not have hair, we cannot use you. And the pastor also doesn't have hair. And God is using. Yeah. Hey. And the problem is, as soon as you look at what is not useful, yeah. you miss what can be used. Yeah. Oh my word. As soon as you look at what cannot be used, what you cannot use, you miss what can be used. I give an example and I gave it during prayer the other time and I said, at one time my 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 my, my car and the German machine, yes, the German machine was I had to drive to Red Land. It was it was peak summer. It was last last year towards, towards the end of December. And I had to drive to Red And as I got into the car, there was no aircon. Do you understand? <laughs> there was no aircon. 42 degrees Celsius. No aircon. So, so I had to drive. My wife even said she's not going with me because of the aircon. Mm -hmm. Some people will leave you just be okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's what happened? What's what happened? The interesting thing about it is, as 
I was driving in the car. I think I was with someone. I'm not sure. I think I had someone. And I was. I was. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was with someone. Huh? What? Oh, you want, you want me to mention names? Oh, I didn't want to mention it, but I was with him. <laughs> and the interesting thing is, when this person came into the car, the first thing I told them is there's no air con. <laughs> Decide now. <laughs> or forever hold your peace. <laughs> this car has got no air con. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, there's a principle here. How many times do people come to join us? And the first thing we see, oh my God. this place has got no, that place has got no. We are the first one to broadcast the negativity. This person did not even know. They did not even ask. But I volunteered the information for it. <laughs> Let's not talk about the place. Let's talk about you. As soon as a brother comes or a sister comes and says, I want to join you in this business, but I do not have money. We never asked if you have money or not. We said we want to join together and work together. Stop talking about what you want to have. But I, it means if somebody has come to you, they saw something in you. They saw something that they can use in you. The problem is you are a broadcaster of what you do not have. And you miss what you have. I want, I, want, I want to partner with you in this business. You know, but I'm slow when I think. Nobody asked. No one asked. No one asked. In fact, the less you mention of it, the more it disappears. And what? When this person got into the car, I told them already that there was no echo. Right? So we're driving. And, and one of the things they said to me, I think, yeah, this is one of the things they said to me. I said, how do you keep your car so beautiful? Had I not mentioned the aircon issue, my car would have been perfect. It would have been user friendly perfect. Until they ask, it's hot, no, let's open the windows. We don't say there's no aircon, we open the windows. The windows work. I know, I just, I just like fresh air. As we were driving in the car, as we were driving in the car, everyone from outside was seeing a Mercedes Benz passing them. Yeah. Yeah. Shh, shh, not a BMW, Mercedes Benz. Shh, shh, oh, wow. Passing them. Now listen. The problem is, you want to stop and tell everyone, don't look at me passing, I've got no aircon. Don't look at me overtaking, I've got no aircon. Don't look at God using me, I've got an issue. Don't look at me praying for people, I've got this that is happening in my life. Don't look at me preaching, I've got this. God does not care about that. He chose you knowing that you are leprous. He chose you knowing that you are weak. He chose you knowing that you are not perfect. He's not looking for perfect people. You are telling him all your excuses. Yes. And God showed me, he said, everyone he called, they had, he had to deal with them first. Yes. Moses says, I cannot speak. Yes. God says, I knew you cannot speak. You don't have to tell me that. Yes. The, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When Gideon was called, he said, I don't have, I come from a small, from a small uh, tribe. I come from small people. God says, I don't care about that. Why are you caring about what God did not care about? Yes. God did not care about that. Thank you, Jesus. If he can, he would have changed that first yeah. before he brought you. He would have, some of the things that are worked along the way, they're not yeah. worked on the start. Yeah. No, they're worked along, along the way. You're like, oh my God, I didn't realize I changed. I'm no longer like that. Yeah. Ha, because he worked on you along the way. Yeah. And as we were driving, the fact that there was no aircon did not mean there was no gas. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> Listen. The aircon does not stop me from getting to my destination. Yeah. Yeah. That's so mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I will still get where I'm going, despite the fact that I'm not feeling any air in the car. Yeah. You see, the problem is you are taking what is small and make it big, yeah. that it stops you from getting involved in what God is calling you Thank for. You, Jesus. Mm -hmm. you have made a small thing a big thing. 
Tell me, I'm not perfect. But nobody said you are. In fact, we all know you are not. Because we also are not. I forgot one of my gadgets at home. But I'll talk about it. I've got a beautiful pen at home. One that came in a gift. Just check if the person who gave it to me is not here. Not here. <laughs> you are not here. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding about that one. Now, the pen came in a gift, and as soon as it arrived, it was, I unwrapped it and it was so awesome. It, quite an expensive pen. In my mind, when I looked at the pen, I said to myself, This is a wonderful gift. But I'm just wondering if I sign this contract with a beak or a, this kind of a pen, <laughs> it will still be legal. <laughs> Whatever pen I use, but it's, it's a special pen, I have it. And I keep it safe because it's a special pen because it was a gift. And one morning, because I've not used it for a long time, right? So I took it out and I needed to sign something. Took it out, opened it up nicely. You know, there are pens that you feel like you're going to sign a million dollar check, even though it's only a thousand rand. Yeah. <laughs> Just because of the, of the beauty of the pen. So I took it out and as I was trying to, it was not writing. And this thing was in a hurry. I said, I don't have time for this. I took a broken pen. A broken pen. The top part of the pen was broken. I think somebody. Yeah. <laughs> wherever, wherever that thing happened. So I took the broken pen. Good. And when I took the broken pen, I signed. Mm -hmm. And God said to me, broken but still useful. Oh. Yeah. Broken yeah. but still useful. 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 The problem is you are focusing on the break. But you're not focusing on the ink. Yeah. The break did not take the ink. Yeah. The ink is still in the pen. Yeah. All you need to do is just use me. Yeah. And you'll be able to see I can still sign. Despite my brokenness, I'm not perfect, but God can still sign through me. Watch when Peter denied Jesus three times, but he still preached on Pentecost and 3,000 repented. I'm not perfect, but God can still use me. And the deal I signed went through. Nobody asked what kind of a pen did you use. Come on now. Nobody asked was it a cheap or expensive pen. And the power of the usefulness of the usefulness of something is not in the material it is made out of, but it is in the hands that it is in. Huh? It is in the hands that it is in. It is in the hands that it is in. As we wrap up, I want you to stand up. I want you to go and sit there. Sit there, play for us. Why we preach? Play, 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 whatever you can play. Whatever you can play. As loud as you can, however you can go. We are failing to be effective, not because there's a problem with the keyboard, <laughs> not because there's a problem with the keyboard, but you see, when the keyboard changes hands, <laughs> Changed hands, it turned into a snake. 
The same handkerchief that was busy wiping the, the sweat of, of Paul when he was preaching. And when he changed hands, it healed people. The same shadow that was just making a shade for someone, when he changed the hands, it began to heal people. All you need to do is just allow God to take over, to take charge. In that specific place. Thank you, Jesus. Is it not time for you to change hands? Sure. Is it not time for you to change hands? Sure. Listen, he did not choose you without knowing. He knew. In fact, he still knows. That you suffer from this, he knows. <laughs> that you are weak here, he knows. <laughs> that, that you cannot handle your, he knows. And I ask God lastly, why? Why? Why do you choose me when there are more perfect people? Why do you choose me? And he said, if I choose the perfect, the glory will belong to them. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. But if I choose the weak, everybody will know. It can only be God. Yeah. Amen. Can you avail yourself to be a testimony for God? Amen. That everybody will know it can only be God. God. Amen. Verse 16. Sure. Watch. Verse 16. Verse 16. Then the people went out and plundered the tents of the Syrians. So a sea of flour was, for, was sold for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel according to the word of the Lord. Listen how the perfect ate when the imperfect made the vision possible. Listen how the clean ate when the unclean made the vision possible. I finish off by saying, are you not delaying us from eating? Because you're still focusing on my leprosy, on my weak this and that. Are you not delaying us from food? Just because you've been telling yourself for all these years, I cannot do this. You know, I, I, there are people that can speak English better than me. I cannot preach. Nobody said preaching is in English. <laughs> And everyone else ate. Mm. And we all started with imperfect people. Mm. And some things we are failing to get into church because we have set a bar so high that you can only be here if you have been met this bar. But God is saying, but I want you as you are. <laughs> we are saying, no, we want you to work on yourself first. Outside the hospital, be healed. And when you come into the hospital, we want healed people. Mm. <laughs> have you not delayed? Because you've been waiting for you to be perfect. Meanwhile, God has put everything perfect in you. John Legend writes, he says, your perfect imperfections. He says, your imperfections are still imperfect, but they are perfect for what I want to do. It's like the same thing that maybe God is saying this morning. That you are imperfect. But your imperfections are exactly what I want to use mm. in the midst of that. Amen. And notice how, remember that whatever the, the leprous man touches becomes what? Oh, Unclean, eh? Mm. eh? Mm. They still eat. <laughs> <laughs> they do not inquire, did you touch it or did you not? Mm. They yeah. eat. Some people are going to forget your weakness ah. when you fulfill the vision. Amen. They will not ask, Is it, it's, has it been built by this? No, I will not. But they will still eat. Yeah. Lord, help me. That despite my imperfections, I am used of you. Amen. Because you chose me knowing how imperfect I am. You chose me knowing how imperfect I am. Let's begin to pray right now. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, mighty God. We come before your presence. We pray that, Lord, you are the one that leads us, that directs us, mighty God, that, oh, Father, we are able to understand, oh, Father, that, Lord, you are not looking for perfect people. You are not looking, oh, God, Father, for the people that have reached the climax of Christianity. 
but you are looking for a people whose heart is willing, whose heart is ready to be used of you. In the name of Jesus, my God, I am imperfect, but you still chose. I am imperfect, but you still chose. I am weak, but you still chose. I am all God, but I'm not strong in all areas, but you still chose to use. You chose knowing, you chose understanding that Father, despite where I am, despite what has happened to me, mighty God, you are still standing with me. In the name of Jesus, I pray that each one of us, mighty God, we don't sit back and say that, Lord, it is not going to happen just because I am weak in this area, just because I am not strong in this area, just because I've got nothing in this area. But Father, you are still going to use me despite, despite the place where I am failing. In the name of Jesus, mighty God, I pray that, Father, it is your eye, it is your hand, oh God, that open our eyes, that open us, oh God, that we may be able to see, that we may be able to understand that our usefulness is despite our weakness, that our usefulness is despite what we do not have. In the name of Jesus, I pray that, Father, you will help us. That, Father, just like the four leprous men, we will stand up and say, Surely the Lord is leading us and is directing us in the mighty precious name of Jesus. I pray. Amen and amen. amen. Listen. The reason why you were hired in that company or you work for that company or you do that business or you do that thing is because despite how many other people we have hired we still need somebody who can do only what you can do yeah. despite how many people how many other people we have hired we need somebody who is an expert in what you do otherwise if we had perfect people only we would not hire anymore Amen. So, if you take the model of the company, you realize that the company brings 10,000 people together that can do 10,000 different things. And why don't we do that in the church? Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you allow your sister to flourish where she can flourish? Yeah. Don't look at what she can't do. That's why she's here, to do what she can do. Mm. Not to do what you can do. Mm. No, to do what she can do. The problem is when, you're, when you keep on looking next door, your own door is falling apart. Yeah. Now. Mm. If the Lord could help us, that we overlook what is not there to be able to appreciate what is there. Because He chose, even though He knew you were imperfect. Mm. Let's bless the Lord this morning with the God. soccer and we'll bet 20 bucks. I was a very good striker back in the days. Back in the days. We bet 20 bucks and every time when we would separate into teams, the last one to be chosen, everybody was trying to avoid. <laughs> I was really the first one to be chosen. <laughs> but the last one to be chosen, everybody would avoid. Because they would think, no, we don't want you in our team. Right? We don't want you not. And the one day, the last one to be chosen was the one who scored the winning goal. In the next game, he was the first one to be chosen. Right? But the, the, the point that I'm trying to drive is the fact that you are last does not mean you can't make a difference. Yeah.